up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold panning as you new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2023 volkswagen atlas cross sport courtesy of hanover volkswagen in hanover pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we are in this one today because this is the cooler looking atlas at least in my personal opinion also there are some minor changes for the 2023 model year and you do get two years or 20 thousand miles of complimentary maintenance on top of all of that as well so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering fuel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several trim levels for the atlas cross sport first one being the se starting at thirty four thousand four hundred and sixty dollars se with technology for thirty eight thousand six hundred and thirty dollars sel for forty four thousand two hundred and thirty sel r line black for forty six thousand one hundred and eighty and lastly the one that we have today being the sel premium r line for fifty one thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars so for those last three trim levels all-wheel drive is going to come standard but for the first two if if you wanted to add all-wheel drive you can do that but simply add nineteen hundred dollars then to either of those prices so when it comes to the power plan of the atlas cross sport there are two different power plants available for this one. First one is going to be a two liter turbocharged four cylinder putting out 235 horsepower at 5400 rpm 258 pound feet of torque coming in at 1600 rpm that power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic zero to sixty time coming in at approximately 7.5 seconds top speed if you're interested 116 miles per hour with mpg numbers coming in at 20 in the city 24 then on the highway but there is one other engine configuration available and that is going to be the one that we have with us here today that is a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 276 horsepower at 6200 rpm 266 pound feet of torque coming in at 3600 rpm power being sent to all four wheels yet again through an eight speed automatic with mpg numbers coming in at 18 in the city 24 on the highway and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the atlas cross board i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes and so there's essentially a little circular dial located just behind the shifter by the way i should mention these drive modes are only for the sel trim levels but they will include eco normal sport custom and then there's going to be some off-road drive modes where you simply just press in the middle button that's going to give you modes like off-road and snow but ultimately adjusting things like the shift points throttle response the steering sensitivity and actually the stability control system and then as well so now have we got all of that out of the way let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 atlas cross sport here up to speed all right we'll do this from a standstill three two one go you can tell it's a naturally aspirated v6 <laughs> there's, there's no turbo lag that's what i meant by that but yeah it's plenty of bit acceleration it's nothing too crazy but you're not going to have any issues in merging onto the highway that's probably just the right power plant for what the atlas cross sport actually is so no issues with that and since it's actually naturally aspirated it should be more reliable than the turbocharged engine as well i'm just going to throw that out there but anyway to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 13.2 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.2 inch ventilated rear disc as far as that braking fuel goes let's actually hit it here since there's nobody behind us it's fine it is on the softer side of things but that's to be expected in suvs traditionally you are going to find that but it's fine it definitely brings you to a plenty fine stop i've felt much worse braking feels in suv so personally for me i wouldn't have any issues with the braking feel in this thing but then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension of course front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes that has been 100 percent perfectly fine in my short test drive here today so definitely absorbing pennsylvania's road of perfection is perfectly fine i wouldn't have any issues taking this thing on a long road trip i'll put it that way as far as steering feel goes it's on the looser side of things <laughs> i will say that and you guys know my preference if you watch my videos before i do like a heavier steering feel but you know what let me go ahead and change the drive mode a little bit not to off-road or off-road custom let's not do that let me go ahead and put it in sport driving mode and that is a heck of a lot better so i will say the steering sensitivity is adjustable dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in that sport driving mode does give you a much heavier feel to the steering if you don't have it in that sport driving mode though 
It is a very loose steering feel as expected in most SUVs, but I personally do prefer the sport driving mode just because of that steering sensitivity that it gives you. But anyways, then touching on cabin noise, I am going 35 miles per hour right now. There is a little bit of road noise, I will say that. Wind noise though is 100% on point, definitely getting none of that. But like I said, there is a little bit of road noise, though a little bit more than uh, I traditionally find in uh, larger SUVs like this. Touching on visibility, it's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And so because of the shape of the Atlas Cross Sport, traditionally you would think it's not going to be that great. It's obviously not going to be as good as the Atlas, but it's not horrible. It's definitely something that I would imagine you would get used to. So for me, I can see perfectly fine out the back, but it does get better when it comes to forward visibility because rain sensing windshield wipers, of course, do come standard on every single trim level of the Atlas Cross Sport. So whenever it detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on your windshield wipers for you though. So it's just one less thing you gotta worry about, kind of like automatic headlights. So that is pretty darn convenient, but that pretty much rounds off the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport finished in opal white pearl. In case you were curious of the exact exterior color that we had on this one here today, but take a look at the van. Let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. First character is the number one, indicating that the Atlas Cross Sport is built and assembled here in the US, at least for US customers. But as always, let's go ahead and start up front. LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard. And if you were to go with one of those SEL trims, they are actually adaptive front headlights, which is amazing. One of those rare features you typically only find on luxury manufacturers, but essentially what that means is when you're going around a bend at night, those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle. Better help illuminating what is around that bench. You're less likely to hit a deer or a possum or a cyclist or whatever the case. So that is a safety feature. And of course it also adds for better visibility at night as well. Automatic feature coming standard, automatic high beams are available. And then taking a look down at the bottom corners there, Front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for better aerodynamics as well. And of course, if you go with one of those R-line trim levels, you are going to find that R insignia or the R badging found in the front grille that you guys are looking at, kind of on the passenger side of that front grille. So definitely looks good as well. But that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so as I climb into the corn for you guys, silver roof rails do come standard on this one. Chrome belt line molding also coming standard along with rear privacy glass. Cross sport axle setting found on those front fenders that definitely looks good i like that little accent piece there body color power adjustable side mirrors do come standard they will be heated with led integrated turn signals as well but one of the most unique aspects for the atlas cross sport to me is how the side skirts are going to differ substantially dependent upon the trim level that you go with so if you go with one of those r-line trim levels they are going to be body colored side skirts otherwise they're going to be matte black side skirts if you were to go with one of the se trims it doesn't look bad either way but i do think the body colored side skirts do look a little bit better in my personal opinion but let's take a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch alloys for the SE trim level, 20 inch alloys for the SE with technology, SEL and R-Line black, and then 21 inch alloys is what you guys are currently looking at for the premium R-Line in case you were curious. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now let's see our around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, gloss black shark fin antenna. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. You do have LED taillights that do come standard on this one. I like the Atlas lettering spelled out on that chrome bar that goes from side to side there definitely looks good as well forward motion badging in the bottom right hand corner of the lift gate there that's going to signify that it is all-wheel drive of course and just below it all and by the way towing package is optional that's what you guys are looking at but just below it all there are actually dual exhaust outlets but they are tucked away so there's cutouts that you guys see in the rear bumper that kind of throw you off a little bit but just underneath of it all you will find dual exhaust outlets like i said so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip. So but now since we are around to the back of the Atlas Cross Sport, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, believe it or not, it is a hands-free power tailgate for every single trim level across the board. That is very rare that a hands-free power tailgate comes standard, even on luxury manufacturers. So that's pretty crazy. But 
Once opened up, cargo capacity behind that second row comes in at 40.3 cubic feet. That's impressive. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 77.8 cubic feet. Very impressive there. Of course, there is cargo lighting back there. There's some grocery bag hooks. There's a 12 volt power outlet. Then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire. And there's actually a good bit of space surrounding that spare tire. So probably put an ice scraper or even a tire inflator kit. There was a good bit of space back there. But anyways, then making our way up to the rear legroom, definitely impressive once again, 40.4 inches. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear ventilation does come standard. There's a little bit of storage back there as well. Well, there are a couple of USB charging ports towards the bottom of those rear air vents at the very bottom there. There's also the 115 volt power outlet, which was kind of cool to see. And actually, if you were to go with the premium trim that we have today, you're also going to get a heated second row. So heated second row seats. That is definitely pretty dang cool as well. And of course, a rear center armrest with cup holders. But of course, this stuff is on it. So let me rip this off real quick. A rear center armrest with cup holders, like I said. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats. VTEX leatherette seating is going to come standard on all trim but the premium premium trim is going to give you full leather seating of course power adjustable driver's seat with power lumbar coming standard heated front seats coming standard if you want a ventilated front seats that's going to be had with the premium trim level only so we do have those today overall though uh, seating was plenty comfortable even with the horizontal seams which I sometimes gripe on seating is still plenty comfortable if it wanted to be more comfortable it could add vertical seams I'm just saying but then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leatherette wrapped for the SE trims and the SEL but then leather wrapped for the R-line trim levels and if you were to go with the SEL trim level and up that steering wheel is also going to be heated and I like the little R insignia uh, at the very bottom of it too that looks pretty cool but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup and let me start by showing when you guys the key here you got your volkswagen logo on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate and the times two button that's going to be a remote start which comes on the se with technology trim level and up but ultimately it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and press that silver engine start button located just to the left of the shifter and so once started up eight inch digital gauge cluster for the se trim levels but then a ten and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster for the sel trim trim level and up. That, of course, is what you guys are looking at. I love it. It's very reminiscent of what Audi does, of course, with Audi being the big brother for Volkswagen, but it is completely customizable. Of course, when you adjust the drive modes, it's going to change the look a little bit, but my very favorite part about the digital gauges in both Volkswagen and Audi, there's just a view button on the steering wheel. If you hit that view button, that is really what completely changes the look up there from your traditional gauge look to all navigation, which is probably what I would leave it on. I think that's such a cool look. It still gives you a digital speedometer how many miles you have left until you hit empty speed limit recognition outside temperature all that stuff so wonderful wonderful gauges here in the atlas cross sport without a doubt i absolutely love them at least but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality there is a power adjustable panoramic sunroof for the sel trim level and up auto dimming rear view mirror for all trim levels led interior lighting for all trim levels as well dual zoom climate control for the se technology trim level and up wireless phone charger with the se with technology trim level and up yet again there is some rubber storage as well just above the infotainment screen so you could probably put some stuff there and it wouldn't slide around as much because it is rubberized storage after all i do like the frameless rear view mirror with home light controls and the little compass in the upper right hand corner i think that looks pretty dang cool Overall, it's a very functional interior. I do like the contrast stitching on the doors as well. In front of the shifter, there's a good bit of uh, rubberized storage there, 12 volt power outlet, couple phone charging ports, two cup holders just to the right of the shifter, electromechanical parking brake as well. Within the center armrest, there is a ton of space, very good bit of space. And that's really the kicker for the Atlas Cross Sport is how much space it has compared to the competition. But Overall, definitely a ton of utility and a ton of space with the interior of this thing. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. You're going to find a 6.5-inch color touchscreen display for the SE, but then an 8-inch color touchscreen display for the SE with technology trim levels and up. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard either way. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well factory navigation system though that's going to come on the sel trim level and up you can find some weather information up there there's some uh, stock information along with your radio information as well and so when it comes to the sound systems on the atlas cross sport six speakers for all trim levels but the premium so 
Therefore, we do have the good sound system with us here today. We got the Fender Premium sound system here. I love that. I got a Fender Squire guitar. Um, that was my first guitar I got way back in the day. But anyways, having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> fun actually that's a really good sound system for the atlas crossboard ton of bass pretty darn good clarity as well fender you did a great job you do a good job with your guitars too but anyways last thing i want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the atlas crossboard in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board not the very highest quality rear view camera compared to the competition but it's there nonetheless, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, forward collision warning with autonomous emergency braking. If you were to go with the SE with technology trim level and up, you're gonna get front and rear parking sensors. If you were to go with the SEL trim level and up, you're gonna get roadside recognition. And if you were to go with the R-Line black trim level and up, you're going to get lane keep assist as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts like i keep saying within the video here tons of cargo space in this thing that is really where it excels compared to the competition you got a ton of rear legroom ton of cargo space especially for it not being a three-row suv so that is quite brilliant great looking suv as well it looks like an audi but in volkswagen form so i love the cross sport styling specifically in the back as far as room for improvement goes i don't like that there is a very basic sound system and all the other trim levels but having said that the sound system that we got in this one is pretty dang good and the other thing is all those safety features that uh you continuously get more and more of as the trim levels go up safety really should come standard on all vehicles out there and a lot of manufacturers do do that like take for example toyota you can get all of these safety features standard on a corolla that you can get on the top trim levels of the atlas cross sport only so that is pretty interesting i really do think safety should come standard for all trim levels but that's just my personal opinion but anyways that about rounds out this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold <laughs>